From Washington, this is VOA News. I'm Victor Beatty reporting the UN Security Council is considering condemning North Korea, known as the DPRK, for Wednesday's missile tests including one medium-range rocket that fell within the waters of Japan's exclusive economic zone. Koro Besho is Japan's U.N. ambassador. In the council, I stressed the importance of this and gravity of this launch and asked for my colleagues to be united in showing the will of the Security Council and send a strong message to the outside world and to DPRK especially. U.S. Ambassador Samantha Power said there were strong condemnations across the board from all council members during Wednesday's meeting. These actions are a challenge to peace and security. They are a challenge to the founding instruments of the United Nations, which emphasize the importance of peace and security. And so we are going to continue to push for the full implementation of Resolution 2270. She dismissed suggestions South Korea's deployment of a U.S. anti-missile system provoked the recent missile tests. Zimbabwe police used tear gas and batons to break up a peaceful rally in Harare against the rule of President Robert Mugabe. This is the only way we can do. We are not violent and we are saying we must go. We are demonstrating against the bond notes. Uh, we don't want the bond notes because it actually will lead to further corruption and total devaluation of the currency. We are not armed. We are just having our guns and our flags just to petition to our government that it is, it is failing us. This is the latest protest against the 92-year-old Mr. Mugabe, who has been in power since 1980. This is VOA News. A Chinese lawyer Thursday was sentenced to seven years in prison for a subversion the third such high-profile trial this week. The sentence was handed down to Zhou Xifeng, a member of a Beijing law firm who took on the cases of people from banned religious groups and dissident scholars, and who state media said attempted to manipulate public opinion and damage national security. Joe was detained along with others a year ago in a crackdown on activists and lawyers. Delays in flight cancellations persist at Dubai's international airport. A day after an Emirates flight from India crash-landed and caught fire, the airport, one of the world's busiest, is operating with just one runway. There were no fatalities. All 300 passengers and crew were safely evacuated before the plane was engulfed in flames. Sheikh Ahmed bin Saeed Al Maktoum is the airline's chairman. Our first priority in this case is that well being of our passenger and crew and answer queries from all the family. We have activated our emergency center here. We are always trying to take care of our passengers. We have extended our full operation to the authority and emergency service among this, uh, during this time or uh, situation. One firefighter died in the incident Wednesday. An investigation is underway. South Sudanese President Salva Kiir fired several ministers Wednesday allied to his First Vice President Riek Machar, who fled the capital of Juba after fresh factional fighting broke out. Political and security tensions have drawn this criticism from U.S. spokesman Mark Tony. I would say that the United States is deeply disappointed uh, in the leadership of South Sudan, uh, that given the opportunity of independence and then, frankly, a second chance uh, that came with the August 2015 uh, peace agreement, have thus far failed to put aside personal power struggles for the good of their people. Toner said the U.S. is putting pressure on both sides to end the violence. A replacement who made on the recommendation of Vice President Taban Dungai replaced Mashar last month. In Libya, pro-government forces backed by U.S. airstrikes continue to try to clear the coastal city of Sirte of Islamic State fighters. 
A senior field commander told Reuters the first U.S. airstrikes announced this week helped secure a residential neighborhood. The U.N.-backed government of national accord requested the U.S. airstrikes to help a nearly three-month offensive. Tunisian President Beji Kaid Sebsi Wednesday named Yusuf Chahed, an agricultural engineer, as prime minister-designate with the task of forming a unity cabinet to tackle the North African country's economic and security challenges. His predecessor was ousted in a parliamentary no-confidence motion. Asian markets closed higher Thursday with rising oil prices, investors expecting an interest rate cut by the Bank of England, and a new jobs report from the U.S. Wednesday, U.S. stocks inched higher. The benchmark Dow Jones adding five points to 18,318. I'm Victor Beatty, VOA News. That's the latest world news from VOA.